It is a wonderful blessing to welcome you all to the General Conference Medical Missionary Department Seminar, a 21st century medical missionary. During the next five days, we will be sharing messages that will help us bring together science and Bible health principles. I would like to give special thanks to all who are connecting with us today and listening to our opening presentation. Jesus Christ, our master and teacher, devoted more time to healing than preaching. So we are commissioned to manifest the same compassion and sympathy and to take special interest in the sufferings of others. We are called to educate ourselves for medical missionary work so that in helping others, we may open the way for the gospel and bring healing to sin sick souls. Let us take this time to learn more about our wonderful health message. But before we do that, we will have a special musical item by the SDRM Charlotte Church Children's Choir who will sing when he comes. Let us now bend our knees for those who are able and lift our voice in prayer to invite the Holy Spirit's presence in our midst. The prayer will be by our dear brother, Jeffrey Ugalde. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come before you to, with thankful hearts for thy means that you have provided for us to learn and to share. I pray your Holy Spirit will lead us 
to the speaker through your servant, that every ear and every heart be blessed with your word and inspired. In Jesus' name we pray through his merits. Amen. We will now take the time to introduce the speaker for today, our dear brother and physician Dragan Ivanov a member of the General Conference Medical Missionary Department, who will discuss how God's handiwork is perfect down to the cellular level, with the topic, Autophagy Proofs Bible Health Principles. It's time that I prescribe you a new powerful medication that is easily accessible to all of us. This medication has a very pronounced therapeutic and preventative effect. In fact, this medication is so near to us and it's so powerful that because of its restorative effects, a Japanese researcher received a Nobel Prize for its discovery in 2016. Dr. Yoshinori Ohsami discovered the healing properties of this medication and showed its mechanism and its restorative effects. Let's see how this medication works. What are its effects? And for which health conditions can it be helpful? This medicine prevents malignant diseases. In the last 15 years, in our country, in Serbia, there has been a significant increase in all malignant diseases. And that's not only in Serbia, but also in the whole world. So we're talking especially breast and prostate cancers, ovarian cancer, stomach cancer, pancreatic and colon cancer, lung and liver cancer, lymphoma and certain leukemias. We had these diseases before. However, in the last 15 years, they have increased significantly. And this is very worrisome to us. We need to see how we can prevent these dangerous malignant diseases. This medicine acts powerfully in the prevention and therapy of malignant diseases. My sister had a tumor on her right kidney 30 years ago. Labs, clinical tests, and CT scans had shown that her tumor was the size of a walnut on her right kidney. She was using this medicine for three months and afterwards she took a CT scan and lab tests again and they showed that the tumor had completely disappeared. The lab tests and clinical results were normal and the, systems were, the symptoms were all gone. I know that this medicine is effective in the fight against both malignant and non-malignant tumors. So this is not just the theory. This is what I have seen with my sister and other patients. This is effective against malignant and non-malignant tumors. This medicine also prevents cardiovascular diseases. If we take 100 people in Novi Sad at this moment, of those 100, 60 will die prematurely from cardiovascular diseases. That means from 60, 100 will die from cardiovascular diseases. When I'm thinking of cardiovascular disease, I mean heart attacks, atrial fibrillation, coronary heart disease, arrhythmias, and heart failure. This medicine is effective for all cardiovascular diseases. 
especially in the prevention of a heart attack. When we're speaking about heart attacks and heart disease, we know that these are more prevalent among men. Women have more problems with strokes. But the good news is that this medicine is also effective in the prevention of strokes. Today, we also have an increased incidence of autoimmune diseases. With these diseases, the immune system does not work properly. It makes serious mistakes. We know that our immune system can recognize invaders. When the microorganism comes around, the immune system recognizes them as a foreign substance and with the help of antibodies, it destroys them. However, in autoimmune disease, the immune system makes mistakes. It treats its own cells, tissues, and organs as a foreign invader. It makes antibodies against its own cells, tissues, and organs. Today, the most common general reason for all diseases in the world is related to autoimmune processes. That makes it difficult to find out what's going on because it could be related to an autoimmune issue. I repeat, with autoimmune diseases, the body mistakenly recognizes our cells and tissues as invaders and starts to make antibodies day after day thus destroying its own tissue completely. As a result, the organ loses its function, which causes the specific disease. So the organ that is the target of the immune disease is called by that name. For example, the autoimmune disease that attacks the thyroid gland is Hashimoto's thyroiditis. The disease that affects the insulation surrounding nerves is multiple sclerosis. The attack on pancreatic tissue causes type 1 diabetes. The body attacking joints and cartilage causes rheumatoid arthritis. A great number of diseases are autoimmune diseases. In the prevention and therapy of these diseases, this medicine is effective. Today, we also have an increased incidence of autoimmune diseases. What is the problem? The immune system does not work properly. It makes serious mistakes. We know that our immune system has the ability to recognize all foreign invaders. So when a microorganism comes around, the immune system recognizes it as a foreign substance and with the help of antibodies, it destroys them. However, in autoimmune diseases, the immune system makes serious mistakes. It treats its own tissues, cells, and organs as a foreign invader. It makes antibodies against its own cells, tissues, and organs. Today, the most common general reason for all diseases in the world is related to the autoimmune processes. That makes it difficult to find out what's going on because it could be related to an autoimmune issue. I repeat, with autoimmune disease, the body mistakenly recognizes our cells and tissues as invaders and starts to make antibodies until it's totally destroyed. So day after day, it destroys its own tissue completely. As a result, the organ loses its function, which causes the specific disease. The organ that is the largest, the target of the autoimmune disease is called by that name. So we have the autoimmune disease that attacks the thyroid glands, it's Hashimoto's thyroiditis, 
disease that affects insulation surrounding the nerves, it's multiple sclerosis. The attack on the pancreatic tissue is type 1 diabetes. The body attacking joints and cartilage causes rheumatoid arthritis. A number of modern diseases are autoimmune diseases. In the prevention and therapy of these diseases, this medicine is effective. I have personal experiences in the healing of these diseases. When the specific problems are solved and the proper therapy applied, there's a drastic improvement in these diseases. This slide shows that the spectrum of these autoimmune diseases affects all the organs of our body. We see every organ of our body may be the target of antibodies. This medicine helps in the prevention and therapy of hyperinsulinemia and diabetes. So what is hyperinsulinemia? It is a disorder where the insulin on the cell wall is higher than normal. Our cells have a wall on which are receptors that are supposed to react to insulin. That means because of the poor dietary choices we make and our bad lifestyle choices, we get insulin resistance. For example, for one glucose to move from the blood into the cell, one insulin needs to come to pick it up and open the door on the cell wall and move the glucose inside to the cell where it will make energy. With insulin resistance, we have one problem. One insulin can't open the door for the glucose to enter the cell. There needs to be six, seven, or eight times more insulin to come and open the door for one glucose. At this point, we still have a normal blood sugar level, but we have too much insulin. As soon as there is too much of a hormone, there is a hormonal imbalance with serious consequences in the body. For young and old, the most frequent consequence of insulin resistance is increased weight and abdominal obesity. People try to lose weight and they can't. They have difficulty following a diet and after a short time, they stop dieting. Young ladies have irregular menstrual cycles and often polycystic ovarian disease. Most women who have polycystic ovarian disease also have hyperinsulinemia. Men have problems with lower testosterone levels and sterility. There are other problems that are caused with hyperinsulinemia. It brings on diabetes. Why? Because the pancreas must work five times harder than normal, and this may last one, two, or three years. But then it loses its ability to function. So the pancreas stops making insulin. Then our blood sugar rises and we get diabetes. But that's not the end. This medicine also prevents recurrent infections. We have an epidemic of severe cases of the flu that may last two or three weeks at a time and often causes pneumonia and severe exhaustion and other complications even death. In the fight against viral and bacterial infections, we have a strong therapeutic agent that was discovered by a Nobel Prize scientist in 2016. Where, we fi- where can we find this wonderful medicine that I have been describing? It is so close to each one of us. For example, it is found just like our heart and our immune system is found in our body. So this medicine is also found very near to us in our body. Everyone's organism has this medicine, but we can ignore it or we can lock it up, but we can activate it also. We have a choice. We can engage it to help us with all our illnesses. This amazing medicine prevents the development of dementia, Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. It prevents atrophy and premature aging of the central nervous system. If you don't use this medicine, 
the cells will get damaged and this will cause accelerated aging and even death. If you don't use this medicine, the cells will get damaged. We will have generalized fatigue and we will age and die prematurely. So which medicine are we talking about? It's about time that I tell you what it is. It's time that I tell you where you can buy it and what is it called. The name of the medicine is autophagy. This medicine is a therapeutic mechanism and has a healing process. It is the process of eating self. What does that mean? Autophagy is the process of recycling dysfunctional cells and reusing the leftover building material to build new cells for energy production. Autophagy is a process that helps to regulate the brain, which in turn recognizes what causes disease and also which are the defective parts in the body. That means the cell structures sometimes change, but it is not ideal. What happens? There's a danger that from that small mistake, a bigger mistake will occur, such as a mutation in the genes or a replication of malignant cells. Our body is capable to recognize the mistake, to remove or minimize it, and to make something new. We are speaking about mistakes of cell parts and in the cell itself. Thanks to autophagy, the cell gets rid of dangerous and unnecessary components. And at the same time, the body gets rid of tumor cells and structures that are causing problems. During autophagy, our body cleanses and detoxifies itself at the cellular level. We're also used to detoxifying our bodies. You know, we each take a shower every day. We detoxify our digestive system. We clean our blood vessels, but that is not enough. A thorough cleaning must happen at the cellular level. Just imagine that our streets are clean, our yard is neat, our lawn is cut, but as we enter a house, there's total chaos. Dirt, trash, and clutter all over the place. In the same way, without autophagy, the interior of our cells, the most important structure of our being, gets overloaded with trash. And this trash causes health problems. In the process of autophagy, recycling takes place. There's the process of decomposition of old cells, pathogenic structures, and microorganisms. After that, the generated waste material is reused. The body remains in a healthy condition and the old damaged malignant cells and microorganisms are totally recycled. This is an amazing process that takes place when we use this medicine of autophagy. So the components that are not needed by the body are not destroyed. They're recycled. The cell matter is saved, but recycled. Then the remaining building material that has built up the old cell is used for new structures. This is how the body remains healthy. How that is done is not important at this moment. Just remember which are the God-given therapeutic and preventative benefits of this process in our body. Logically, the first thing that will be recycled is the excess abdominal fat if we're overweight. So why is that important? We know that obesity shortens life just as much as smoking. Did you know that? For this reason, autophagy is very critical because it recycles the extra abdominal fat we have. There is a proven significant association between abdominal obesity, the likelihood of depression, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, and some malignant diseases. For me, it was interesting to see the relation between abdominal obesity and depression. We know the larger the abdomen a person has, 
the greater the likelihood of obesity. Numerous studies have shown that depression is linked to what we eat and to our digestion. The stomach is called the second brain. Not only because what we eat affects our brain, but when we get stressed, we get stomach cramps and indigestion. But also conversely, the health of our stomach affects the health of our central nervous system. Did you know that most of the neurotransmitters and brain hormones are created and found in the intestinal wall? Serotonin, melatonin, and dopamine are hormones whose concentration is higher in the intestines than in the brain. So the greater one's abdominal fat, the lower the testosterone level, while estradiol will be higher. So if men have excess fat around their abdomen, it is one type of a problem. If it's found in women, it's a different type of a problem. In women, a high estrogen level causes hormone dependent breast cancer. Men with greater abdominal fat get prostate disease. Research has proven that a reduction of calories and weight loss slows down the aging process, resulting in increased energy and younger looks. That's why what we eat, how much we eat, and how much we exercise are very important. These lifestyle practices are vital to good health. In the beginning, God said to Adam, the first man, in the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 19. Why did God say this? Physical exercise that causes sweating has a powerful preventive and therapeutic effect, not only in weight loss, but also it improves mood and has a positive effect on other diseases. In the process of autophagy, adipose tissue dissolves and what else is destroyed? Harmful tumor cells are recycled. What else happens? Pathogens and microorganisms in our intestines, stomach, and in the blood are also recycled. What else is decomposed and recycled? The fat is found on the walls of blood vessels. We've discussed this earlier and you know what we're talking about. The good news is that these fatty deposits can be lowered significantly. The evidence for this is seen on angiograms of the coronary blood vessels of the individual before and after they begin eating a plant-based diet. That means we are taking a scan of how these coronary blood vessels look like before and after an individual starts eating a plant-based diet. Research shows that after one year on a plant-based diet, the coronary arteries that were narrowed by 90% were reduced to 60%. That is a great decrease, a significant widening of the lumen of the coronary blood vessels. As a result of autophagy, there's a favorable therapeutic process called recycling. So let's see, what are the results of recycling? What are the specific consequences of recycling? Autophagy completely regenerates our body and protects us from premature aging. And that is great news. Today, according to scientists, we have the potential to live to up to 120 years. That is, we could live up to 120 years if we would live a lifestyle following the laws of health. However, it seems like we're choosing to live in ways that are not optimal for our health. We have so many lifestyle practices that shorten our lives and bring premature aging. Not only does autophagy regenerate our, our organism, autophagy leads to a new life of rejuvenation. How does that happen? When the old defective cells are destroyed, growth hormone is secreted, which enables the formation of new young cells from the recycled material. Do you understand that the parts of the cell that are not good are taken apart 
and what is left is decomposed. And this recycled material is used in a new healthy young cell. Do we need this? I know I need this. So what happens because of this recycling? We have increased energy. Not only is the recycled material used to make new cells, but from them energy is also made. So you know this is also done when they recycle trash. Our body is doing the same thing. So we can easily change from going in second gear to increasing to fifth gear and have more energy. Consequently, the immune system works much better. What else happens? There is the revitalization of the whole body. The whole organism feels more invigorated. This is not only a theory, but this is also what my patients have tried and been successful with. This is my, what my family members have tried and also what I have experienced. How can we activate this medicine? How can we start using it? We have heard the name of the medicine. Let's see how we can activate it. How can we use it? It's very inexpensive. It's free. No one can say it's expensive and they don't have money. How do we get some of this medicine? By being hungry, by fasting. Fasting is the most effective activator of autophagy. There are other mechanisms, but fasting or hunger is the most powerful and best activator of autophagy. We set the table and eat nothing, but drink only water. What is important to remember? For the process of autophagy to be activated, at least 12 hours must pass from the previous meal. Each day, we can activate this therapeutic mechanism but time-restricted eating or autophagy. How? It's simple. Eat breakfast by yourself, divide your lunch with a friend, and if you love yourself, don't eat dinner. Give it to an enemy. If we don't eat dinner, eat breakfast around 8, lunch around 3, and there will be more than 12 hours till breakfast. This time-restricted eating plan will activate autophagy. And in this way, our organism will be constantly under the protection of a therapeutic process of autophagy, especially those of us who are sedentary. We don't dig digits, we don't work in the mines or work in construction. At the end of the day, we have only water or lemonade or tea, nothing else. That means 12 to 18 hours must pass between lunch and the breakfast the next day. The culmination of this process will be reached in 24 to 30 hours of fasting. When our body fasts, it sends a message to the brain that there is not enough food. The brain then activates the process of autophagy where the organism destroys damaged defective proteins from which mutagens can be made. The brain recognizes that and begins the process of autophagy. That's good news. During this fasting state, insulin levels in the blood are very low, which activates glucagon, a hormone that has the opposite effect of insulin. Glucagon increases blood glucose levels. Glucagon finds all deformed, damaged cells and pulls out energy from them. That makes sense. It's just like when we have no money to buy food, we look in our freezer, in our pantry, and we use the food from there. When we run out of food, we sell our clothes, we sell our tools, and we use that money to buy food. That's how during the process of autophagy, our body gets rid of unnecessary structures. And this is managed by our brain together with glucagon. If we ingest a small quantity of food like an apple for dinner, glucagon is deactivated and then the process of autophagy stops. For this reason, do not ever eat between meals and don't eat dinner. Go to bed with an empty stomach. We're the ones who can choose if we want to age early or if we want to be young and energetic. Our choice will determine the quality of life we will live. Do we want to be healthy? Do we want to be protected from the degenerative diseases and health problems that we mentioned? Poor health is not destiny, but it is dependent on our daily choices. What can we do? We can decide that instead of dinner, we will put two or three glasses of water on the table. And let's see how this will look till tomorrow morning. And the result will be autophagy. Pregnant women, children, nursing mothers, 
should eat three meals a day and should not skip dinner. Everyone else can practice time-restricted eating to receive the benefits of autophagy. Make sure you drink two or three quarts of water. This can be done. You can try it. You won't know how easy it is until you try it. As I was preparing this lecture, I told myself, you're going to fast for a couple of days. The first day, just water. And then next day, you will drink only juices. So you too can experience time-restricted eating and get the benefits of autophagy. Then you will be able to speak from experience. When I was younger, I fasted eight or nine days and drank only water. After the third day, I was no longer hungry. It's possible to fast one day per week with water only, or at least twice a month. Besides that, Make sure to skip dinner daily. The Bible proves together with Dr. Yoshinori of Sami and others that fasting and prayer have powerful healing potency. If we practice them in our life, we will be convinced that they work. As medical missionaries of the 21st century, we need to know how science is proving God's health laws so we can intelligently share the health message with our friends, neighbors, and co-workers. How does autophagy prove Bible health principles? We know that fasting was commended in the Bible. Some of the greatest men of faith fasted for long periods. Moses fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Elijah fasted 40 days and 40 nights as he walked to Mount Horeb. Daniel fasted for three weeks, and Jesus Christ himself fasted 40 days and nights in the wilderness. Intermittent fasting and time-restricted eating are scientifically proven methods of eating that have shown to have great health benefits. Time-restricted eating is defined as a type of daily fasting for at least 12 hours per day. People who practice it ingest all their calories during a 6 to 8 hour period or a 10 to 12 hour window of time, which results in a daily fast of 12 to 18 hours. So let's say we decide to eat only two meals a day. When is the best time to eat them? Research shows that early time-restricted eating is best. This is where both meals fit into an early six to eight hour period of the day. We would eat breakfast at seven or eight a.m. and lunch around two or three p.m. and nothing until the next morning. As presented by Dr. Ivanov, fasting 12 to 18 hours starts the process of autophagy. But did you know that the idea of time-restricted eating and intermittent fasting was given by God to Seventh-day Adventists over 150 years ago as part of the health message? Inspiration says, in many cases of sickness, the very best remedy is for the patient to fast for a meal or two, that the overworked organs of digestion may have an opportunity to rest. At least five or six hours should intervene between the meals, and most persons who give the plan a trial will find that two meals a day are better than three. This is time-restricted eating at its best. Now notice the power of intermittent fasting. There are some who would be benefited more by abstinence from food for a day or two every week than by any amount of treatment or medical advice. To fast one day a week would be of incalculable benefit to them. Isn't it wonderful to know that our great creator gave us cutting-edge science on the benefits of time-restricted eating and intermittent fasting in his word, and through inspiration years ago because he knows what is best for our body. As healthcare providers, each one of us has opportunities to share the health message with our patients and the people we meet. Dr. Ivanov also has many opportunities to teach and speak about health with his students at the university on TV interviews 
and at our church in Novi Sad, Serbia, where he holds regular health lectures. Recently, he was interviewed by Novak Djokovic, a young Serbian professional tennis player who is currently ranked number one in the world by the Association of Professionals Tennis Players. About six years ago, Djokovic adopted the plant-based diet. However, after some time, he felt low in vitality and strength. As he was looking for a health professional to help him improve his diet, he found several of Dr. Ivanov's health lectures on YouTube. Djokovic learned that Dr. Ivanov was a vegetarian from birth and that he had done research on a plant-based diet. Djokovic immediately adopted the dietary health principles he learned from Dr. Ivanov. He also implemented time-restricted eating and as a result, he started to regain his strength and vitality. Djokovic liked how Dr. Ivanov spoke not only about a plant-based diet and health, but also about spiritual health and wellness. In 2020, Djokovic called Dr. Ivanov and asked him for an interview because he wanted to share his newfound knowledge on health and diet with millions of his followers on Instagram. This interview was heard in Europe and other continents. This is how the health message was carried by one healthcare provider through one interview and several YouTube videos. Friends and believers, God has called each of you, no matter what your profession, to be a 21st century medical missionary. You can sow seeds of health and healing that may sprout for eternity. If you are a healthcare provider, you can reach people in ways that others cannot. But everyone can share the health message with a sick and hopeless world. You can share your time, your love, your healthy meals, and health knowledge with your neighbors and coworkers. There are dozens of ways you can share the health message and open the doors for the gospel. This is what the 21st Century Medical Missionary Seminar is all about. Listen to every presentation and you will be blessed and inspired. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for the health message which you gave us over 150 years ago. We appreciate today's study on time-restricted eating and autophagy in preserving and restoring our health. Forgive us for not always obeying your health laws. Please help us from this day forward to follow your health plan wholeheartedly. Give us the power to change. We pray for our church family around the world, our mothers and fathers, our children and youth. Bless each one of them and give them the desire to change their lifestyle. Inspire all with courage to share the health message and the gospel of Jesus Christ with the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Isn't it marvelous how our body is so well designed that even our cells have a perfect way to get rid of waste and recycle things? To know that when God told us to fast, it would be beneficial not only to our spiritual health, but essential to our body and its smallest components. We are forever grateful to our God for taking such good care of us. And we thank each one of you for taking the time to listen, learn, and to apply. May what we have learned today be a blessing as we share it with others. Before we have our closing prayer, we will have a second musical item by Sophia and Daniel titled, It Was For Me.
Let us conclude today's meeting asking for God's presence by kneeling down for prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today to thank you for another opportunity to learn from the inspired word. We thank you, Lord, for the blessing of our health message, which teaches us to trust your way more than ours. We ask for the Holy Spirit to give us wisdom so that we can use what we have learned today to be a healing presence to others. We ask you to prepare us to be medical missionaries and to lead others to the true source of health and salvation. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you all once again for listening to the first presentation of the Medical Missionary Department Seminar and hope that you have gained a deeper and stronger connection to our health message. Join us tomorrow for our second presentation titled The Institute, which will be presented by our brother Les Bauer. Hope you have a blessed day and see you soon.